The movie begins with Rick running after the bus while shouting for the bus to stop. The bus stops suddenly and he runs right into the mirror which hits him in the face. As he stands, the stop sign slams right into him. He tries to walk into the bus and the doors fly open, knocking him flat on his back once more. He joins other students on the bus, heading on a school trip to the research facility, amalgamated. We are also introduced to his crush, Jill Johnson, who barely knows he exists, and his best friend Trey. Trey tells him to forget about Jill, since she is out of his league, but he could do it, and keeps thinking about her. At the lab, they are led into Amalgamated Animals Genetics Labs, where all the animals are genetically modified. His crush speaks to him for the first time, and he tries to impress her with his photography. He ends up setting a bird on fire with the flash of his camera. And they were not warned to bring a camera in. To hide his error he kicks the blackened bird away and it lands on Lance's back. Lance bullies him, even while Jill objects to the bad treatment. Rick is saved by the lead scientist, Lou Landers, who as it turns out that has a terminal illness. He also knows Rick's late parents, and is an uncle to Lance, Jill's boyfriend. Rick is pushed into an animal's poop by Lance when no one is watching. He grabs a liquid labeled H2O from the shelf and sprays it over his shirt, in a bid to get the stain out. But the liquid is not what he thought it was. In fact, it is a new pheromone developed by the lab called Compound H209, a drop of which draws animals and encourages them to mate. Soon, animals climb all over Rick's body, drawn by the scent of the pheromones. He is bitten on the neck by a genetically modified dragonfly, which has enormous strength for its size. Back at the lab, Dr. Landers tries out an experimental project that alters DNA and restores the body's health. The machine breaks down and doesn't heal Dr. Landers, instead, it gives him an evil power. He can suck the life completely out of people, simply by touching them. He also has super strength, and goes on to suck the life out of everyone in the room. Rick sleeps for five straight days before waking up again, fully recovered, and the bite moral from the dragonfly was completely gone. Back in school, he can't take his eyes off Jill, and bumps into Lance who pushed him away angrily. Stephen Hawking, the renowned scientist is invited to speak to the students. He laments about having to sit in a wheelchair for most of his life. And as he complains a lot, the students do not listen to him. Rick wants to talk to Jill badly, he walks off to the corner and places his hand on the washer. His hand gets stuck on the smooth exterior of the washer, he forced his right hand off, and watches the tiny hooks that had spouted out of his palm, he doesn't understand, and on forcing the left hand, he pulls the dishwasher off the wall and smacks it right onto the back of Lance, flattening him. Lance gets off the ground, and starts throwing punches which he dodges expertly, until one punch lands on his face, and he runs into a fat man, his hand rests on a man's shirt and trousers, and as he pulls his hands away, he pulls off the man's clothes, he manages to extricate himself, and try to escape, but this time, he knocks over Stephen Hawking's wheelchair, and the invalid was vaulted into the bee box, all the bees are released and buzz about the area, chasing everybody, he leaves the school and tries to practice climbing a wall with his bare hands. It works perfectly and he enjoys himself, dancing up on the wall. We see a truck loses its brakes and was going to run a woman over. But Rick runs over quickly, nudges the woman out of the way, then stops the truck with his body. People gather to congratulate him and call him a hero. He excuses himself, rushing away from the crowd. He rushes home while his uncle and Trey are hanging a wall cabinet. His uncle shoots a nail at him in error, and Rick dogged expertly, catching the nail easily. He is surprised, and Rick tries to explain it to him. His uncle stabs him with a knife to see if he was telling the truth, the blade bends without penetrating the body. He is surprised, but his words annoy Rick, who is sad that his uncle doesn't understand him. Rick storms out of the house with his late father's ring, stating that his uncle doesn't understand him. He thinks about the night his parents died, blaming himself for what he did. The night when he tried to help and caused more harm, it was that night. While dying, his father gave him his ring and asked him to go be a hero. He notices Jill quarreling with her mother, and speaks to her when she comes out, waiting to go out with her boyfriend. Later, Professor Xavier contacted him through a video on his computer. When she says she would like to ride along in his car someday, he tries to get a loan at the bank. A thief comes in and robs the bank while he was in there. The thief escapes, shooting his uncle Albert who was outside in the car. 
Lou Landers continues to suck the life of others to keep living, and Jill visits him at the hospital. Rick regrets not stopping the thief before he gets to attack his uncle. On his way, he meets Professor Xavier who takes him to a school for people with special talents. His wife tells him the secret to becoming a superhero is making a costume. He goes home and makes one, gets a superhero name as well, Dragonfly. He begins to help people, but he cannot fly. Lou learns that he cannot live unless he kills someone every day, or gets his hand on some cerulean. He plans to get the cerulean he needs from Professor Hawking's lab, and calls himself Hourglass. While he is about to attack people, Dragonfly attacks him. Hourglass throws titanium blades at him, and they penetrate his body, and he disappears, leaving Dragonfly on the floor. While he is pinning over Jill, watching her from his window, his mother advises him to keep her safe, and not tell her how he feels, just to keep her safe. He goes to support her, where she was auditioning to give her a flower, but wouldn't tell her about his feelings, to keep her safe. When a group of men chases her, he is forced to wear his cape and save her. Jill and his boyfriend Lance plan to spend Thanksgiving with Rick and his family. And Lance invites his uncle Lou Landers, who goes into Rick's room to check for him. He suspects Rick of being the dragonfly, and abruptly leaves the Thanksgiving dinner. While Rick is talking with Jill, Hourglass comes back in his full suit and warns Rick that he will hurt his family if he doesn't stop, and kills Rick's aunt. After the burial, he tells Jill he can't be with her, in a bid to make her leave so she won't be hurt, and he doesn't want to be the dragonfly anymore. He sits at home, eating junk food and feeling sorry for himself. His uncle and Trey advise him to keep people safe from Hourglass, who plans to kill a lot of people. The Hourglass needs to kill thousands of people in one location, and they find out an award ceremony is scheduled to host on the same day, where there will be exactly 1,000 people. Rick's uncle Albert drives him and his friend to the location and they try to find the hourglass. He is on the location but there was no way of knowing who he is exactly. So Rick asks Lou Landers for help as he is also there to get an award. Lou Landers convinces him that the Dalai Lama is the hourglass. And Dragonfly gets to work immediately, trying to force a confession out of him by slamming his head onto the podium. Suddenly, everyone begins to fight each other, and Hourglass takes the opportunity to escape. Jill discovers that Lou Landers is the Hourglass, and calls out. Rick chases after him, and Hourglass blows up a portion of a building. It falls on Dragonfly, who is pinned to the ground and helpless. While he is lying helpless on the ground, Hourglass throws a titanium blade at him, trying to kill him. Jill jumps in front of the blade, and it cuts into her stomach. The dragonfly forces himself to get up so he could help the girl he loves. Jill is dying, just like his aunt, and he doesn't believe that he can stop the hourglass. While in a room, carrying his dying love in his hands, Stephen Hawking tells he must stop the hourglass or many people will die. Dragonfly doesn't believe he is really a superhero, since he cannot fly. He has almost given up hope, but Stephen Hawking convinces him to use his gifts to save humanity. He rushed into the room where Hourglass has already begun the process of becoming immortal by destroying thousands of people. His chair is sending out rays connected to Cerulean, which will suck the life of thousands of people to make sure he becomes immortal. Hourglass tells Dragonfly he is too late, but Dragonfly moves to the chair, lays a hand on it to send rays of the life force within the chair into his dying girlfriend. The supercharged life rays revive Jill and she comes to life again. But now, there are only 10 seconds left before Hourglass destroys the whole world. He mocks the dragonfly and taunts him with the destruction of his world. But that wasn't enough for the Hourglass, he wants to destroy Dragonfly as well. So he throws a packed hand bomb at him, which he caught with his hand, knowing that his hand will stick to it and he wouldn't be able to pull it off. While the dragonfly was struggling with the bomb, it falls on his body, and he was running out of time. In a swift move, he rushes over to Hourglass and holds on tight to him. The bomb detonated, splintering Hourglass into a thousand tiny pieces, but doing no harm to Dragonfly because of his impenetrable skin. The force of the blast also knocks Jill off the roof and she begins falling to her death. Dragonfly jumps out too, trying to catch her. He is able to catch her before she falls but she is unable to fly and they were both going to die. Just as he is losing all hope, his wings come out just like the wings of the dragonfly. He flies gently up to the roof, bearing his girlfriend in his arms. She recognizes his father's ring on his hand and calls his name Rick. 
He is happy to reveal his identity to her now and that the hourglass is dead. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video. Back in my bag and I got to brag. I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel.